Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're going to give you a little bit of a production update. So Jerry is all mic'd up. We've got uh, our sweet Mary Claire is filming us and we both get to be in the video today and yep. talk it through because you and Andrew have been doing a lot of work. You did a lot of work over Christmas. We've done a lot of work over Christmas. Yeah, we have power to fans, the heaters. We're running power right now to lights and fans that circulate, the HAF fans. So they're fans that you may see them in here, the little white ones back there. So they circulate the air in right. here in a pattern and keeps you know the air from being stagnant. Yeah, so they're, they're positioned in opposite directions. Yeah. So you can circulate the fan and the air and so you don't get hot spots and, and all that other good stuff. So all that's been doing and you've you've ordered you've gotten the lights but we haven't installed the lights yet no we haven't we were going to we're going to hang the lights we're going to be four in each bay just enough to give us some light if we have to walk in here at night we're not we normally do we not work, work at night, at night. <laughs> but i come up sometimes it can be at 10 o'clock at night sometimes especially during the season and just check on everything make sure things have recovered from you know the day and make sure the things got watered correctly. So it's nice to be able to come in here and without yes. tripping so, over something. And like those lights, are, they're LED lights, and they're gonna go down the center. Yeah, they're gonna go down the center. And so each bay will have four, so it'll be twelve of them. It's just enough to you know to light your feet and so you don't trip over a plant or you know right be able to see some good stuff. So yeah. all that's done. Did we uh, want to talk? Did we want to talk about the Atlas control stuff? Yeah, you know, we, we haven't, haven't talked really about talked about that a lot with the Atlas greenhouse and. They sell this system from Bartlett Instruments, and we we now have it in here. It's partially wired, so. Um, and this is basically kind of the the brains, right? Yeah. So if you're you know if you're in the market, you're looking at a greenhouse, and you know give Heath a call at Atlas, and he'll get you hooked right up with what you need. But if you're this greenhouse, if you're looking out and about, you'll see the white curtains everywhere. This entire greenhouse can you know open up so when it comes to be about summertime mm -hmm. you know this thing is going to stay open all the time but the this system and the climate boss from Bartlett um, controls all that so you set different temperatures for your heating and cooling and in different steps on when it's going to ask for more cooling or more heat so this system is set up with heat one and heat two and cool one and cool two. So let's say for instance, I have it yesterday. It got, we don't have a cooling set up yet. So it got up to almost 85 in here yesterday and Ooh. it was nice and warm. <laughs> so we felt like we were already in the Caribbean, you know, yeah. thinking about growing some vermilion air, you know, you I mean, that, they just loves that kind of heat. So, but anyway, like the absolute best hummingbird attractor. I love that plant. So anyway, so heat one and heat two, it says I'm gonna turn heat one on if I'm, you know, too cool, right? So it will ask these two heaters that are up here to the left and to the right there in the center to come on. And if it gets it up to temperature, it won't ask for heat two. But if it doesn't, it's gonna then click on heat number two. Like I just said, I'm in the tropics. It's 80, 85 degrees in here. I need to cool off. The first thing that's going to open are going to be those three shutters up in the gable. So it's going to allow for cool air to come in first before it kicks on the big fans that are behind us. Um, but also it could tell these guys, these guys here control the curtains. Each one controls two curtains. So this, let's just say, for instance, this one is controlling the side curtains. It will say, okay, I need to open up a little bit and they'll raise up maybe six to 10 inches depending on the temperature and where we're at. If it's super hot and it has some reason it hasn't cut on or it malfunctioned and I need to come in here and I got it all working, it's gonna, it's gonna open this greenhouse up quick to try to get it down, say my temperature was 70 degrees. I'm trying to keep it at and it's at 80 85 it's going to try to cool it down really quick so it's it's going through all those steps and everything and so like in the springtime especially like you'll be in the greenhouse and you'll just hear them click on and they'll go up and they'll stay open 
you know, maybe halfway, a couple inches, like Jerry said, for five, 10 minutes, then they'll close and then they'll come back on. So they just are constantly up and down because of course in a greenhouse, I mean like outside right now, it's, it's quite cool outside, but we come in here and we're like, oh, it's so warm and toasty and there's no heat on, it's just from the sun. Yeah. And so you've got to try to keep these plants at a certain temperature range because if you get too hot, then the plants get really, really leggy, right? Even if maybe they love it hot, it'll get super leggy or if it's too cold, obviously you can risk if it gets really yeah. cold, they'll, you could kill some of them. Yeah, like production one, which we'll walk through there in just a minute, you know, it's a manual crank and we're human and we're not going to remember every single time you know that oh my gosh i forgot to raise the curtain over there this morning or when to raise it and you can walk in that thing in the middle of the day and you forgot to raise the curtain it's a it'll be 90 degrees in there really fast so that can like that can make your plants you know jump you know sometimes we want that but normally not right you know so then the plans for Especially. in here okay let's talk about since we got kind of the electrical done right um so I noticed you've got a very long orange Yeah, wire. that's going to be a 30 amp circuit for the potty machine. Okay. And um, we're thinking, we were, Andrew and I were talking this morning, um, we can put the machine here, we can put the machine over here. We have plenty of cord to go over and plug in. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking you bring in the the toe where the hopper is back here okay and it goes long this way yeah yeah i think so i think that's right what we talk about no back it in we're going to back it in yeah yeah we're going to back it in through here so that way we don't have to worry about turning it yeah so we just back it in and park yes. it right here yes and then it's shooting plants out this way, this way. so which we're going to show you in just a little bit, our new conveyors, we're going to align these conveyors out this way. So that would be kind of a good point. If we, it's if you could get it right here mm -hmm. and it's shooting out plants this way, it's kind of in the middle of the greenhouse. So we are filling, we're going to fill that far bay first mm -hmm. and then you can, we can actually put a turn on it mm -hmm. and shoot them this way, fill them up, take that out. And it just keeps going. So the last spot that's going to be field is we'll going to be, right, be here. right here where the conveyor goes so we'll fill all that up fill all this up and the last spot probably be about 50 plants of you know something so right do you there. think we'll use will we have plants on the concrete i think of it, i don't know i mean I'm, I'm hoping we will it's really going to depend on how well the the online store continues to pump you mm -hmm. know uh, we've done really well with the pre-order you know but um we expect in january and february things are going to pick up on more pre-orders and just ordering throughout the spring and then we'd have to have more space in here for mm -hmm. all those lovely annuals and perennials all those beautiful plants mm -hmm. yeah all those pretty plants so and we'll be able to um get the soil in here Yes, yeah, so the soil, I think we, that's what's going to be nice, and that's why we did this concrete pad, is that we can work on this, yeah. it's a level surface, and we can go ahead and store a good bit of soil already in here, and we don't have to go out of the greenhouse to go get it when it's raining. Because inevitably, right, so because we're potting yeah. in January and February, and that's when it's, I mean, I, yeah. I think everybody has, that's their worst winter weather is then, and it is, it can be, like, we've even had soil to freeze. Like yeah. when you come in and you've got chunks of frozen soil, which is obviously not what you want. Yeah. Um, so we can store a good number of bags in here. We can, store, we can store all that in all our pots and trays, and um, which we're getting ready to show you in just a minute on what we're going to do with those pots and trays for this year. Um, but I do like the fact that I think if we line up the potty machine mm -hmm. with the hopper in this zone area, that the bobcat can be you back here. You have plenty here, of room right here to And it has plenty of height room. Yep. So we can get that bag lifted over the top with no problem. Yeah, I agree. So I think, 
in the long run, I, I think eventually the, the, the machine may, this may be a, become a really permanent spot for it. And then we just have to figure out how we're going to get plants from here to those two houses up there. I think so. I think once we get it out, I think once we get it out, it's not going back in there. Yeah. Because so, we've got, I mean, that the annex is the hub of all the e-commerce and all mm -hmm. of that with the shipping. And I think it's just not going to go back in there. I think yeah. it's just going to hang out here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. So let's just let's, let's just um, you know go take a look up there right quick. Yeah, because we got the fun new. Uh, it's not really a machine. Um, tool. Yeah. Accessory. So. So like, what I was saying, if if we did leave that machine in there, we're back out here now, and you can see. You know, production one and two, what we used to call it. I guess we're gonna have to come up with some new names. But <laughs> it's, it's trying to get them from here. If we're potting here, it's from trying to get them in a more efficient way from here to there. You know, we can get more conveyors, I guess. I mean, well, but, yeah. But it's that, that means a door has to stay open. You know? A couple of people have been asking where Brenna is. Brenna's been, she's been in the video. So I was like, where has she been the past couple of times? Well, she's been here. But uh, yeah, so she's she's currently being confined to Johnny right now because it's been cold and wet and she kind of loses her mind. So no fear, Brenna's good. She If you hear her whining, she's just in Johnny, but So for well. this year, we're gonna go with the same plan, production one and two and down at retail. So retail goes first. These are retail houses in there. So that's why there's no need for you to worry as far as pre-ordering for retail it's all being separate from what we're going to do in e-commerce in this house so our our folks know when they're pulling for retail they can go in there and pull plants all they want right you know and here is it's going to be sectioned off i it could overflow in there at some point but um and I, just as a point just to reiterate so we've had um, our local customers who have come in and because we've talked about a lot on videos about pre-orders and make sure you get your pre-order in. Um, that is for online orders. If you are one of our local people or people who are coming to see us, we have got tons of inventory for you. So don't worry, you don't, if you're coming to the garden center, you don't have to pre-order. Just come as you normally do um, those times that you come and we will have, have those plants available. And the online inventory, as far as like the plant selection for annuals, we're going to offer the same annuals online that are here at the retail garden center. So like everybody's going to have Vermillionaire. It's going to be online and it's going to be here. We have the Rock and Salvias will be online and here at the garden center. Yep. So if you see me talking about a plant and I'm talking about, you know, it's for online or whatever, I don't know, just, you know, I'm putting a container together. Just know that you can order it both online and here at the garden center. You can come pick it up. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I really, there was a question about, or somebody said about proving winners, or this is all you grow, or something like that. I think, I think there's a few perennials that are not, but I'm, I've, I've, we've stuck with proven winter annuals for a long time now. That's what we sell at the garden center. Yeah, and that is, they, they about, are by far the best performers. I brought in some stuff to test. Last year. Last year. I mean, guys, I, I've never killed a petunia. Well, I, they, some of these did. Right. You know, so there, it's, it was, there, there's just, a, I've done it for so long now, you know, and that's why, you know. Well, and that's how we got into Proven Winners is because however many years ago, you were like, hey, let's, because we were growing non-branded annuals and you said, hey, let's, let's see what all this buzz is about Proven yeah. Winners. And I don't know, the first year maybe brought in 10 different plants, right? And they just performed great. And then the next year we, okay, well, let's try some more. So then we brought in like 20. And then we worked it way our way up where we like yeah. our our annual inventory is 100 percent proven winners and it's just because they have perf they have proven themselves to perform and do the absolute best and we have tried you know other either non-branded annuals or other brands and, and i did see just don't on that too that like the, your video that went out yesterday i think it was the the 2024s the new the new introductions the new introductions so uh, there was a lot of folks that got excited about that <laughs> there was some comments about petunias 
and not liking petunias. And I, I, that goes back to several videos ago. I don't know that you're considering the, you know, like a proven winner. Proven winner of petunias are not the same as a seed generated petunia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are, just like with any plant, there are care tips that you know, make you more successful. Now, some well, people might not just like the flower. The but see, then that's the thing. Yeah, so he's looking at it from like a grower's perspective. So that, the reason that he is saying that is because he's the grower. And so he, that's, that's where his brain goes. I am more on the gardener side of it, right? And I understand, I mean, you do too, that everybody doesn't like the same plants and that's okay, that's right? Cool. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, if truth be told, some of the super bells are not my favorite because they have to be in containers and I can only do so many containers, right? Where petunias for me, I can put them in the landscape. But that's, I mean, that's what makes the world go round and make the world beautiful, right? So maybe you don't like petunias, but you love salvia, right? Or you love volvulus, whatever it is. Like, I'm not offended when somebody goes, I don't really care for petunias. That's not a problem. My mama doesn't really like petunias. I'm not I'm saying I'm offended. I didn't say you were offended, but, but I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying where I come at it from a gardener's perspective and go, well, that's fine. You no. don't have to like petunias. I mean, doesn't you're not hurting my feelings. No, I just and think you're it's a misunderstanding it a, of like of, of it maybe It could their, be, but it also problems. could be just like they're too fussy. They require too no, much attention. True. They do because they can be. They have to be. They fed. can be fed. If right? they're not fed, then they're, they're not, not going to produce the flowers. So well, I would probably go with one of the um, like the, the mini vistas because they're they're you know like a vista it's like bubble gum and jazzberry and snowdrift they're they're those things are aggressive plants right so so it's okay if you don't like a certain plant we're not going to be offended right yep so this is the first production house production one we built it's all manual but we've brought in some something that's not manual. It's automated. It's a nice conveyor Why don't you turn system. It on? Yeah, I'll turn it on. So, and the fun thing about these is that you can see they're in, these are 12 foot sections and they're aluminum. So, weight wise, like I could easily pick up one of these by myself, but just because it's 12 feet long, it can be a little awkward. So, if you have two people, um, you could easily pick these up. They're just sitting on the stands, so we can easily move them around. There's one motor on it right now, and it has, I love it because of the speed variable. Like, you could sling them out of here, or yeah. you could go super slow. Yeah, this is like... Not even medium. Not even, make quarter, not even quarter of the speed. Yeah. So these are made by Rapid Veyer. I don't, I think the logo's over here. Yeah, the logo's right there. Yeah. Um, up in Michigan, at rapidveyor.com there. Um, but this is just the, this is the 12, the 12 inch wide. We didn't need anything super wide, but they make them where they're 12 and 18 width, but they're super simple to put together. So this one's being generated by one motor up front. So yeah, here comes the new trays of, we're getting, trying to get ready the, with our grandes. So, Everything that gets shipped in an annual that comes to you is going to come in this grande right here. So we're super simple. There you go. Yep. I just turned it off. So one motor right here, then this is the, the controller, the speed controller and everything here. But you have forward, reverse, and of course it's in stop right now. Everything is on. This will turn it on. Speed. Off they go. So you just lay them down. If you had them finished and you were just trying to move product, maybe we're trying to get it to shipping, and that would be the best way to go is get it there fast. So everything, just like, you know, last year where we brought in the potty machine, um, so much of this, when we bring in automation, it's not that we're replacing human labor at all. It's that we're taking the jobs that are not fun for anybody and that are physically demanding because having to the most you can carry of a tray like a full tray of annuals is two like you can carry one in a hand yeah. um and it's you're just walking <laughs> back like if you've watched our production videos at you know from last year you always have somebody that's walking back and forth back and forth and you, just, you know you get your steps in that's that's a good thing um but we're trying to use automation to alleviate 
those jobs that are more physically demanding or that nobody really wants to do. Correct. And that's that's the, the thing right there. It's just going to move a lot of plants fast. And actually, you know, most of the time you have to have more, more people. people. The mm -hmm. potting machine, it brings in more people. I can sit up here with a trailer and bags of soils and I can pot by myself, but it's going to take a long time, mm -hmm. but I can do it by myself. I can't really run the potting machine by myself. I've got it to where I could do two of us, but we have to turn it on, make a bunch, stop it, and then then plant. Right. You know, so it's a little process that we've come up with when you got two or three people. But it takes it takes more. If you're people. gonna like when we when those annuals come in and we've got tens of thousands of annuals to pot up. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you have a crew of ten people at a time, then you can knock some plants. Yeah, you can go out. to it. It it, it, will, it will we would just fly through all of this. So we're gonna set up a station up front, a very simple station with the grandes, the trays and everything. So we've got somebody putting all this together. And then the, for the first time, we're gonna move these pots all the way down the line and be ready to go. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that's the plan. And then just, I don't know, what, an hour ago? Yeah, so if you've got, if you've probably already received a box like this if you've ordered from us back in the fall when we were shipping shrubs and it was just a plain box and had some, comments about that you know but we were working on this design this it just doesn't happen overnight it takes a little bit of time to get it together so we got our logo in the box we got the arrows for the live plants to help our ups friends to keep our boxes upright and i say help because we can't control that so anyways um good system put together this is just a four count when you a lot of you have placed a good, a good number of orders and it's going to take multiple 16 count boxes right. so we have four eight twelve and sixteen um so we'll be shipping these out come sometime in march to all yeah. our warmer folks so but yeah um yeah starting in march all the way through hopefully you'll uh yeah. you'll see lots of little creekside boxes on your front step and Hopefully they're all pointing in the right direction, but even if not, we'll have systems in place within the box, but yeah, just know we're, we're trying y'all. <laughs> so if you're a new grower and you happen to be watching and you're, you're thinking about the, the systems, you know, this is the 10, the 10 count tray. Um, we get ours from Pleasant View and this is a nice tray. You can actually, this tray, they switched to a different manufacturer for the tray and it will last mm -hmm. so you it's can a actually nice, sturdy and yeah. it feels good in your hand too yeah the other one i don't the other one was it was thinner flimsy. it's a different i don't know all the technical terms of these plastics. yeah but there's some where if you just did that it, it tears it would snap yeah so this one it, you, you can continue to use it so because they're they're costing we use them too to help our customers at checkout at retail right you know and um but they'll just sit here and it just it's i love the coex pot keeps things you know we just like to just having the little line of course they make machines that do pots um emily enjoys doing this but it's just is one of those great tasks that you don't yeah. have to think you can just turn your music on and but you this can is sit here and just get them done and it's no thinking. So you look right there and you see that all the logo is facing. Yep. And that's that's by design. Because if you try to if you try it, it won't go in. So it's a self symmetrizing tray. Yeah. So it has little notches in the bottom of the cup and the bottom of the tray. So that way it goes in and locks in so the logo is always facing out. So it keeps it neat and looks neat at your display and whatnot. So um, I like this tray. Yeah. So we're so plants arrive week. the so third week of January, right? The annuals do. Now we have perennials are on their way. I think it's going to be like January, the week of January the sixth, maybe somewhere in there that there that those perennials are coming. We will start the spring 2024 potting season. So do you know which it's, ones? It's we here. Just, you saw the tags. Do you remember? I did not open the box. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But it is, it's like Christmas. Even though it's the same plants maybe that we've done for years and years and years, but when they get here, it's so funny because all the Creekside employees, they're like, oh, it's bubble gum. 
Um, or it's, I, I don't know, Rockapulco yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, hello, old friend. It's so good to see you because we all know what great plants they are. And to see an easel as little teeny tiny little babies, you get very, very excited about it, especially when mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get Lenny again from uh, Pleasant View. Yes. He's our driver, comes down. So we get to have the great Lenny from Pleasant View Garden. And it's cool, you know, when they come off, you know, you can instantly see color. Yeah. Especially the annuals. And it's, it's instant color and you get to kind of preview Especially that. Especially like the coleus. That's really fun because we'll, we'll categorize and lay all the yeah. plants out together. Big. And so you have the coleus and it's just like this patchwork quilt of all this beautiful yeah. color. Yeah. That's so. a lot of fun. Yeah, so you still have to plenty of time to pre-order. We're taking pre-orders, a lot of those right now. Um, we're still trying to add as much as we can. So it, like, just like we've been saying, it's important that we try to get as much of this ordered now so we can reload and grow more for the customers that are waiting. There's going to be folks that are going to wait and order in March. I like to... In April and May. In April, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of plants out there still on the website that are low, I mean, high numbers. I'm surprised, like with the euphorbias, you know, diamond, snow, yeah, princess. Yeah, we were talking about that because those, yeah, yeah diamonds, well, diamonds, yeah. that was, that was. That was a lot of Yeah, yeah that's wrong plant. Uh, diamond, no princess. Diamond snow, diamond frost, diamond mountain. Yeah. Just great. And lemon coral. Plants. Lemon coral. There was, what was it? Two years ago, that three plant, years ago, we could not keep enough lemon coral in stock. That plant goes up and down, and I guess it's just that lime green color that people get excited about it, and then it kind of fades out a little bit, and the whites come in again, and you know, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of sitting there, or it's being missed, I don't know. So, But, but it's, it's a good one. It's a great classic. I like lemon coral on the front of the border. You lay it out in the front, you could probably go in behind that with you know, you could use some of the euphorbias, you know, like. Well, see, and I even have it in the um, in the bed going around to the patio. So I have lemon coral and then I have dianthus. So I have, oh, and it's yes. alternating. So I yes. have, yes. I can't remember now which one it is, paint the town magenta, magenta maybe. Which is and really so good. it's because the lemon coral sedum for us in an 8A7 is a perennial. So even right now in the dead of winter, I have got chartreuse lime next to my blue green dianthus and it alternates all the way down. And so they're right on the edge. Mm -hmm. um, and so even in dead of winter, they still look beautiful and it's, there's not, not one flower on anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of, yeah, so don't overlook that lemon coral sedum. It is a great one. It does great in containers, like it'll spill over. Yeah. Um, it's really fun. Yeah, let us know of uh, some topics that you may want, like one I'm thinking about off the top of my head is just going over the hummingbird or tractor plants. Yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. have an so idea you, yeah, of about want, a group of plants. Would you rather, like, do you want to do like group of plants because people, I know you're gobbling up like plant videos right now, like you love those. So maybe do you want us to do ones that are more um, deer resistant, pollinator or tractor, um, drought, that's a drought tolerant. Yeah. Um, maybe ones that like the water. Um, you know, what are some topics or um, groups of plants that you would like us to cover? And then we can give you a whole list of plants that go and fall under that category. Yeah, I don't know, always, it's like a, it's like a tip. I always put Prince Tut and Vertigo in, in the area of the greenhouse where I know it needs to get heat and it also where I, where I have water. This greenhouse over here flows water differently they like water. They love water. So I put water. it in an area where the water channels right out of the greenhouse and it just collects water all the time. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So all give right. us some ideas on that. But yeah, so production will be getting started really soon. We will take you along for the ride because I personally feel it's really important that you know where your plants come from. They just don't magically appear in the garden center come spring and summer. And again, y'all really enjoy the production videos to see how we get these little tea tiny plugs of plants or bare roots, right? And then grow them out to these big, beautiful plants that then you get to have in your garden. Yeah. But as always, thanks so much for going to the Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.